Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of text network visualization and GPT-3 AI-based text generation tools to develop your own ideas in new and interesting ways. So that in the end, you get something like this graph where you can see all the main topics in your ideas, how they relate to one another, and most importantly, that you can use to detect the structural gaps in your thinking so that you can then later generate ideas using the AI that would bridge those structural gaps and help you think in terms of the connections that you haven't thought of before. So in order to try it out, you can go to infranotice.com and then add a new graph. And here you have three options available. You can either analyze an existing text. So for example, if you have a, a research paper or something that you wrote before, you can use that. You can develop an idea, that's what we will do, or you can explore an existing topic. So that is if you want to start thinking about a certain subject. Here we will use develop an idea, click that. And then I'm just going to type in an idea that I'm currently thinking about. I'm going to totally improvise so you will see the workflow uh, that is completely not rehearsed. And that might make it more interesting and useful. So I'm thinking about how machine learning can be used to enhance our understanding of physicality and body movement, which relates to another practice that I'm interested in. So here, as you can see, Infranodus directly detects the structural gaps between those concepts. And the way it works, to just kind of describe it very briefly, is that Every word that I added is a node in the graph, every co-occurrence is the connection. Then based on that representation, I can detect which concepts belong to certain groups. And already here I can see that there is one group that is about the body physicality movement and another group which is about machine learning enhancing understanding. And Infranodos detects this gap and it proposes me to think of a connection between those two topics. So it's always looking at the gaps finds uh, the holes in my thinking and then proposes me to think uh, of how I could connect them together. By the way, if my thought was too connected, it would help me think of the periphery, but I'll demonstrate it later. So he, here, here it proposes me a research question and I can either answer it myself if I'm a kind of person that doesn't like to use the AI and thinks that it should be a human being who generates all the ideas, or I can use the AI and uh, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, allow it to help me think further on that topic. So here I'm going to do just that. I will ask the AI to generate some research facts that link those two concepts together. So here it says, new research suggests that incorporating physical movement into learning can enhance understanding and retention. So this can be interesting for me because it shows me how physical movement can enhance my cognitive capacities. Then let's generate more facts. And some studies have shown that physical movement can help enhance understanding and learning in machines. Okay, this is unusual, but let's add this into the graph. So I click this button here. Add this, I can see how it fits into the existing discourse, and then I see the whole discourse again. And then generate more facts. And, uh, okay, here it's interesting and maybe a little bit more related to what I was thinking about. So here it says that physically enhancing a learner's body by providing them with the exoskeletons or other wearable devices can help improve the understanding and learning. Okay, let's add this. So somehow this combination of um, the body and the machine. I can also generate research questions. So if I don't want the facts, if I don't want the machine to do my job for me, I can also generate research questions. And this can be super interesting too because it will motivate me to think of the connections that I haven't thought of before. So for example here it's about wearable exoskeleton device that can be used to improve learning and understanding. So how can we sort of use these cybernetic devices to improve our co cognitive capacities or what are the cognitive benefits of using a wearable exoskeleton device. But let's say I'm not so interested in that exoskeleton part. So I'm going to show you how I would do further. I will delete this from the graph let's say I will think about it later. It's an interesting topic, but not right now. Then I can select machine learning and let's say physical movement. So I can select the topics that I'm interested in that I want to develop further. 
and focus on them and ask the AI to just help me with those. Click Generate Facts again. And what it's going to do here is that it's going to find some stuff on exactly what I wanted. Some machine learning algorithms can be used to predict human movement patterns. This has potential applications in fields such as healthcare and rehabilitation. Okay, this is super interesting. I will add this into the graph. So some practical uses. As, as you can see, it shows me how it fits into the discourse. I actually connected these topics together. Then another fact is that some machine learning algorithms have been designed to learn and predict human movement. So again, similar fact. Let's add it. And as you can see, um, it makes a new connection between them. Another fact says about prediction and how Google's DeepMind algorithm can predict the 3D structure of a protein after being trained on millions of examples. So something about also biology. I can add this and continue generating more facts if I want that would link those concepts together or also use the AI to generate research questions. So here is a very long fact that tells me how machine learning can help machines to identify patterns and mimic those patterns accurately. You can add this also into the graph. So I'm kind of in the inspiration stage now where I'm gathering ideas based on my original research questions. Then I can go back and for instance at this point I can deselect the nodes, see the whole structure, also use the analytics panel the S and step to see that I have something about movement pattern, enhance improve understanding, learning to predict something and something on accuracy additionally surrounding. There are more topics here also something on biology. So for example, let's say that I want to explore a little bit more on machine learning physical movement, but this time I'm not going to use the AI, I'm just going to see what exists out there on Google on that subject. So I can just click this button Google and it's going to do the search and show me the top results for that search query, which I can also integrate into my graph. So here it says uh, statistical machine learning of sleep and physical ability phenotypes from sensor data in UK Biobank participants. Okay, so actually physical phenotypes from sensor data. That sounds interesting and I even have a link to a research paper. So I'm going to save it into the graph. I'm going to click save the graph. Add this into the graph. So as you can see it fits nicely into the existing discourse. More results. The keyword detection analysis of the body not so interesting I skip that more research more results C current physical activity guidelines focus on volume and on behavior of underlining okay so this could be interesting it's another research paper save it into the graph and let's add some more okay physical activity mobile health application okay this is interesting some apps that are used to how people enhance their physical activity using AI. So I'm going to save this into the graph. And I want to show you how that looks here. Also, we have a filter panel. So I can select only my own idea. So this is the original idea I started from. Then I have the GPT-3 stuff generated by the AI. And then I have Google search results. And that's a separate graph. And what's great is that I can even compare what exists in Google search results that where it was not generated by uh, the AI. So I can click on Google results, then I click this button that shows me the differences between the two uh, categories of statements. And then I select what I want to compare it to, in this case, to T3. And I can see exactly what is mentioned in Google search results that is not mentioned in the AI discourse that I generated. So for example, I can say, okay, I'm actually interested in this idea of machine learning, activity, hard step, sensor, physical. And then I will ask AI to generate something on that subject. So just let's do this. Okay. And then we click facts. After those are selected, Okay, these are some general facts about heart rate. Machine learning, heart step sensor, physical activity can help you better monitor your physical activity and heart health. Okay, might be an obvious fact, but I'm going to add it just to have it here in my list of inspirations. 
And also another fact, machine learning hard step sensor physical activity can predict mortality rates with up to 91% accuracy. Okay, so this is important. Add this into the graph. And then once I do this a few times through several iterations using several sources, I can deselect this stuff, even bring the exoskeleton back into the graph, and then start writing my ideas. So for example, I will click on see all the statements again, and I will start writing my own ideas. I will say that, for instance, machine learning can be used to predict uh, unhealthy movement patterns and help in diagnostics. And here I'm going to add it with a different tag. I'm going to add it as a as idea so I can filter it after and distinguish it from the stuff that were added using the AI. Add this into the graph. It shows me how it fits into the existing discourse. I can also select this statement and see how it fits exactly. And I can also add something about like just an idea that maybe a machine learning based app that could detect physical movement patterns and provide some advice on improving whatever, improving something. I can develop this idea later, save, save it into the graph. It's highlighted here and again I can filter and see only my ideas and for example if I come back to this graph later and I want to see how it compares to what already was imported through OpenAI I select this this comparison button here GPT-3 and then I see what I talked about so I will need to just make sure it shows the labels for all the nodes here in the settings panel I see that it's about diagnostic devices and apps. I talked about that, but it didn't really exist in the AI. So I will ask the AI now to talk about this stuff. Diagnostic app, machine learning, physical movement. Select all these nodes. By the way, on the left, you can see in which context these are used. So you can also use the graph to search through your ideas. But here I selected some nodes on the basis of which I want to generate more ideas click AI facts and then it's going to generate some facts that could be interesting for me. So here uh, some diagnostic apps use machine learning to detect physical movement and predict when someone is likely to have a heart attack or a stroke. Okay, let's add this. Useful for us. Then improve the accuracy of diagnosis. Okay, also it can generate ideas so this is more in the marketing direction. Uh, here it proposes me to think of a diagnostic app that uses machine learning to detect f physical movement disorders. Okay, I save it into the graph. can be interesting for me. More ideas, an app that uses to diagnose movement disorders again. And let's generate more ideas, see if it can come up with something new. To track and analyze physical movement and disorders again. So let's maybe look into Google and see if there is something interesting. Okay, diagnosis from Google. So I save it into the graph and so on. So as you can see, it's really, it can be like a rabbit hole uh, that you can just like explore a certain concept based on your research question using both Google AI questions, facts, and sort of interact with this uh, AI based tool to help you come up with new ideas and develop your ideas further. Once you're finished, you can use the analytics panel to see what are the structural gaps. Look at those gaps. So for example, here it identifies that there is a gap between uh, these two topics and generate a research question based on that gap, which might also provoke you to think in some new interesting ways. So for example, are there any current or past physical activities that can be used to enhance understanding and improve body behavior? Okay, so kind of like studying the history of physical activity to understand how it could improve my current behavior. I can even click answer here and it's going to try to answer that research question for me. Or I can answer it myself. Okay, yoga can helps to improve posture, helps to calm the mind and rest the body. So here's an example of a physical practice that can be 
used to achieve these goals. Add this into the graph and continue exploring those ideas. So this is how it works in a nutshell. You can try it out on infernodes.com with your own research abstracts or questions and ideas. I will also add a link to, to a tutorial to the description of this video that is available on our support portal. And also if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, please let us know, contact us, and we will be happy to help you to see how this workflow could fit into what you're working on at the moment. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy using this tool.